Moving to the next topic, nighttime is really the time of the witch. Why is that so important? I think this is tied to the idea of the quiet mind. That during the day there's so many distractions, even in ancient life, which was not as complicated as <laughs> modern life. But the idea of quieting the mind, and that happened after the sun went down, everybody settled in, and this was more conducive to altered states of consciousness, I believe. To go out at night when things were settled, quiet, no glaring sun, no heat of day. And then in that quiet moment came the stars and the moon. And I think that this helped sort of quiet the spirit. And to see the sky as more expansive. During the day you see a blue sky and a sun. Almost seems limited as to how far that, that goes out there. But if you look at the idea of these endless stars and the moon, it seems like something new has opened up. A greater reality is, is before you. I think that this was probably some of the seeds of why witchcraft became associated with the night. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think also that that's why so much superstition has been, you know, built around the idea of the witch going out under the moon into the night and, you know, that things are scary and unknown? How do, how, how do you think that that really helps or hinders the witch? Well, I think it was problematic for the witch in early times, um, primarily because, again, going back to human nature. You see, most people in ancient times, they'd worked very hard during the day, so sundown, when the sun had set and night had come, most likely mealtime and then to bed. So the good folk had gone to bed already. But they knew that these witches were out there at night. What were they really up to? See, this is human nature. Mm -hmm. They couldn't stop and think, well, maybe they're involved in a spiritual practice or maybe they're doing really beneficial things while I'm trying to sleep, you know, as opposed to them thinking, what are they really up to out there? So again, human nature became negative about that. Um, they couldn't grant to them that there was a good reason mm -hmm. to be out at night doing anything. You know, why weren't you in bed like everyone else, mm -hmm. preparing for the next work day? Mm -hmm. um, so it, I think it hindered the witch in that perspective, but it also lent an air of mystery. Because in addition to the negative view of what are you doing out there, would have been, wow, what are they doing? And what can they do out there? Why is that a special time for them? What power do they know exists in the night that I don't? And so it probably became a blend uh, of the mystical and the fearful. Um, so that's, that was probably good and bad. Do you think that during those times, those earlier times, that that the women or men who were practicing witchcraft in the night, did, do you think they saw it as a spirituality or, or a religious practice? I mean, do you think that they had any kind of, you know, thoughts about it in those terms? Well, if we take a running start at that idea, we do know that in ancient writings, uh, Medea, for example, was a priestess of Hecate. So here you have the idea early on of a religious figure or a religious connection with a witch. She worshiped the goddess Hecate, which suggests religion, or if not religion, spirituality. She used an altar, and altars usually mean some kind of religious or sacredness connection, so it's not completely mundane. Mm -hmm. Some people are adamant that witchcraft is strictly a practice. It's just spells and rituals, and there are no um, deities involved, there's no spiritual or religious, it's just something you can do, it's an art. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the early model when you look back at some of these writings. So did they, during those time periods later on and into the Middle Ages and even into modern times, did they see themselves as spiritual or religious? I think some of them probably did. Um, I would actually be sure that some of them did. Uh, some of them probably not. They just saw it as a way of, uh, of gaining personal power. Uh, that's always been a human goal to be powerful. You know, and sometimes no ethics are attached to that as we can see in modern times. But the idea of a spirituality I think would drive you more through hard times than the idea of an art that you could perform. Um, so. I would lean, I'm in the camp that leans more towards the idea of spirituality and, and a religious connotation 
being a thread that runs through witchcraft from ancient times into modern. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that uh, that spirituality is also connected to the spirit of the land? I think it helps awaken that in a person. Mm -hmm. I, I think that tying into what's emanating from the earth itself, what is this place communicating to you, can certainly enhance your spirituality. And that's not a, as bizarre an idea as it may sound, because people, even outside of this genre, talk about how a place feels. You know, this house was creepy, or, you know, I wanted to get out of this neighborhood, or whatever, for no tangible reason sometimes. But just the idea that it felt. Or some people will say, well, there were murders in this house, and now it feels a bad mm -hmm. energy there. And these aren't people that are witches. These are just people who would use terms like that. I don't like the feel of this house. I don't like the feel of this land, whatever it might be. So there does seem to be something about how a place can affect your spirituality or your thought processes. Mm -hmm.